What's good? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the show, man. It is Tuesday, so you already know what time it is. But before we get into this thing, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss shit snit that's going down, all right? So, of course, you can already tell from the title, we're getting ready to get into Tyler Perry's um, sister's trailer breakdown for season six, episode number eight. So let's go ahead and get into this thing. So let's go ahead and deal with, you know, something I'm really not caring about, but it's in the trailer. So we got to talk about it. And that's the whole situation with Maurice, Sabrina and Calvin. So we see in the trailer where Maurice is still pretty much gun ho about getting back at Q, which we understand he's pissed off. But at the same time, he needs to listen to those who are around him and who absolutely are looking now for his best interest. And he's not listening to Sabrina nor Calvin. Now, the only person I'm really concerned about in this situation is Sabrina because Sabrina has went out on a limb to go out and reach out to Bio to loan her the money to get her friend, her friend out of jail. And the sad part about it is with Maurice, all we're seeing is this negative, this nasty attitude. He's mentally out of place right now because his only concern is getting back at Q. All right. So he's going to end up losing himself in this whole battle because Q don't give an F. And, and he's already said that. All right. So don't hurt the ones who are looking out for you. And oftentimes when we are hurting, the ones that end up getting hurt the most are the ones that we love and they love us because they don't know how to quit loving us because that's what they do. All right. Anyhow, moving on from there, we see Andy and Fatima. Now, I've already spoken a little bit about this, so I'm not going too much get into this, but the other day when I mentioned that Andy was talking about you guys giving me hope, I had to go back and reanalyze it just a little bit to think about it. What did she really mean by that? So I'm just thinking, I'm just throwing it out there, guys. Is Andy saying that she looks to Fatima and Zach as an inspiration because of all the things that they are going through? She knows Zach's history, all the baggage that he's bringing to the table. And if Fatima is able to make it through that, damn, there may be a possibility for me and Gary, who is also bringing baggage. I mean, it's just a thought because initially I was like, what type of hope? Are you really seeing out of these two being together? I don't see it. But obviously, that's that's the only thing that I can really put together in my head, right? <laughs> Outside of this is some bullshit. But anyhow, going on from there, we see Andy and Gary. Now, look. Gary, Gary, Gary. Listen, bro, you've already embarrassed us long enough. Between you, Zach, Preston... Damn, we got some sorry examples on here. The only one it looks like I can ride with shit is Calvin. And <laughs> hey, he ain't got nobody. But I'm just saying, listen, the whole fact that Gary had to come to Andy means that he's been thinking about this since that night. This has truly been thinking about how I'm going to get back at Andy. I promise you, because he's that type of dude for real. Like most I know are not going to really be concerned about getting back. Grown-ass men are not concerned about getting back at somebody. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that I'm different, and I'm going to show you. But what this does right here is that he approaches Andy and attacks her as she would. Like, I'm not going to approach a situation as my wife would because we don't think the same. So when Gary approaches this situation and he makes the statement, you're not the best sex I've had, Nick, man, you're my <laughs> this guy right here is ridiculous, y'all. Like, ladies, if you are looking for a man and this man is combative, he wants to go back and forth with you, like, you probably don't need to be with him because, listen, real men out here are not doing this. We're not, and we're not going to sit up here and go back and forth about some shit that, listen, you know what your stroke game is. And she might say, well, you weren't the best thing ever. 
but you know how she was curled up that night, right? You know how she was breathing hard that night. Yeah, you might not be the best she ever had, but you can see from that body language when you was in there, Gary, if it was good or not to her. Damn show. Leave it at that, bro. Now you coming in here because your you you your feelings hurt. See you all in your feelings. That's the reason why you approach this situation in such a way. And then when you look at Andy on the side here, she just lifts her head up like this. Like she knows she got you, bro. She knows that you done lost the battle. And she knows she done got to you. Bro, think differently, man. So anyhow, going on from there, we sit over in the sister circle. So we head over to Karen's house where all the ladies are sitting on the couch. And for some reason, Danny is saying, we know who the baby's father is. Who in the hell cares, Daddy? We don't care at this point. She, she was supposed to tell them a while ago. I mean, she said, I'm going to tell him. So, damn, you've seen Aaron. You've seen Zach numerous times held his hands while you were walking down the yellow brick road and shit so i just figured by this time you would have conveyed that information to somebody and we would know who the father is but at this point we really don't care because you don't care because you ain't told no damn body so anyhow moving on from there we see this scene where zach is coming in and he's pretty much trying to get up on Fatima, like he's trying to kiss her or whatnot. And she avoids that kiss as she has done repeatedly, all right? So from there, he's talking about, look, I'm, I'm not begging you anymore. Now, listen, I don't know where this conversation is going. I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about. But if we were to just go off of what we have right here within the context... We could assume that he's talking about, hey, I've been trying to get in contact with you. I've been trying to talk to you this whole time and you've been avoiding me. We could say that. But at the same time, I'm really interested in what Fatima has to say in this situation. Because as of right now, Fatima has spoken to everyone except for Zach. So in my head, I'm like, how in the hell is that going to help you in your relationship with Zach if you're not talking to Zach? So that's really what I'm weighing on. For me with Zach, I really don't give a damn about this situation either because either you're going to choose one or the other. But since we're already talking about choosing somebody, we see in the next scene where Danny is talking about she's thinking about giving it a try. What in the hell is she talking about? Is she talking about she and Preston working this thing out, potentially making themselves an item? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, listen, old boy still got that old girl at the hotel that he sent back home. Um... In my mind, I'm thinking, if he treated his fiance like that, or ex-fiance, let me just say that. If he treated his ex-fiance, Mindy, like that. So my question to Danny is, at this point, why in the hell would you want a man like that? One that just let his ex-fiance go back home. Yes, he's saying that he chose you, but at the same time, he was going back and forth with you as well as with Mindy. So... Once again, you, you're dealing with this guy that has no no damn sense of direction at this point, Danny. Like I've said numerous times, the men in this show irk me to the core because they have no sense of direction. But what we do see in all of these men is the fact that they have great professions, they make pretty good money, but they effed up in the head. So I'm hoping that Danny isn't talking about trying to bring this back shit i guess she wants that whole thing back too um maybe she's willing to give it a try i hope that's not the option she's looking towards but who knows we'll wait till tomorrow night to see anyhow since we're talking about options let's get into this whole situation with karen and zach all right so it's just funny to me that they constantly are together they've been together numerous times alone like they're a daggone couple like, I just want to know where Zach's head is, because in this conversation, he's saying it's crazy how life kind of puts you where you're supposed to be. And he's looking at her like, it's, it's in love, like, love, love, like, <laughs> dang, oh, man. Oh, and this is interesting, y'all, because as we're watching this clip, we, we notice later that Karen states that she wants him to take her home and make love to her. Mm. Oh, no. I hold you. 
<laughs> I want you to take me home and make love to me. Now, now, let's go ahead and be adults about this situation and be honest. We cannot sit up here and say that we did not see this shit on the rise. Because for the last couple of weeks, these two individuals have been giving Google eyes to one another. They've been holding hands. They've been giving each other you know, exclusive, lovely, bubbly hugs and shit outside the salon. So at this point in time, it was only a matter of time before these words were to be uttered. And look, truth be told, I'm blaming both of these individuals because first and foremost, I'm sad about this because Karen is going to end up getting hurt. Zach has not changed. Now, I'm not team Fatima. I'm not team Karen. I want both of these beautiful black sisters to win. All right. But at the same time, old boy is no good. He's not good for neither one of them. And unfortunately, I hear people trying to take sides like, oh, I want Karen to be with Zach. Or I want Fatima to be with Zach. Shit. Neither one of them deserves Zach. Let's keep it 100. Because right now, she's sitting up here, quote unquote, pregnant by who knows who cares but at the same time if he was any type of man this situation wouldn't even be going down let's call it what it is zach has allowed karen to kiss him multiple times on the cheek the hell with that let's be honest if your man was out here allowing some woman ex-woman whatever to constantly kiss him it doesn't matter. Why are we getting to this point where we're constantly allowing excuses to just ride out? This is multiple times here. So I can see how Fatima has some type of feeling towards him going out chilling with Karen. Because it seems like when he gets around Karen, this has no filter. Like he just allows it to go. And he's not caring about it because he's just involved in the moment. But right here, this is so very disres uh, disrespectful for Karen because this man has a whole fiance. And for her to turn around and say, hey, I want you to take me home and make love to me, it's utterly disrespectful. So, you know, moving on from there, um, let's go ahead and deal with the one that everybody's talking about. Now, here are my thoughts on it. I could be wrong, but it is what it is y'all know how i get down around here so we see the scene where fatima comes in the apartment now i do not believe that fatima just walks into the apartment now if we go back to um the clip where karen is telling her girls that hey zach is coming over and we're getting ready to have sex y'all ass is gonna have to leave so you know, woo, woo, woo. so my assumption is that the door is already unlocked and that I believe personally that Fatima knocks on the door. And I believe that Karen believes that that is Zach. All right. That's the reason why she doesn't turn around. All right. That's just my 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 belief right now, because if she knew it was Fatima, I don't think she would be sitting there with her back towards the wall. All right, or the door per se. Um, along with that, I don't, I don't want to discredit Fatima to be that type of woman. She seems to me, even though she tries to handle her own shit, she's independent. You know, at the same time, she still gives me traditional woman vibes. All right, like she still is, you know, someone that's not going to be disrespectful to someone else's house. All right, because if that was the case, she would have popped up a long damn time ago, busting in the door. But that doesn't seem like that's for Tima. That's just my take on it. Give me your thoughts down below, man. Anyhow, I am truly waiting for this episode for tomorrow, man, because I think that what we think is going to happen isn't going to happen. Um, I honestly believe that the situation with Fatima is is they're gonna have to have a discussion. And I know a lot of people are like, why in the world would Fatima talk to Karen? Well, shit, somebody going to have to because Zach has not stepped up to the to the table to, you know, facilitate this situation. This is all on Zach. Like, Karen wouldn't even be in this state of mind if Zach would have nipped it in the bud like Barney Fife on, on the Andy Griffin show. You know what I'm saying? All he has to do is go on out here and, and speak up and say, look, Karen, 
I'm glad you're alive. You know, uh, I would assist. I would love to assist you with rebuilding your shop or whatnot. But at the same time, I still got my, my boo is over here. This is where my heart is right now. But obviously, he ain't there yet. Mentally, this ain't there yet. So anyhow, man, let me get off of this, man. But uh, thank you guys for listening. If you made it to this point in this video, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.